All right. Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Trading the Markets. I am your host, Tom Vase, uh, coming to you live from Panama, where I've been for quite a little while. Normally, I do these streams 12 hours earlier, but uh, morning was a little busy for me. And let's see how many live viewers we get. Uh, evening New York time. Uh, late afternoon out on the West Coast. Uh, Australia is loving it. I do have a large following in Australia. And uh, Europe's asleep, so they'll get this the moment they wake up um, yeah, in about six, seven hours. Okay, so uh, let's go on to the charts and see what's going on. Decided to use a panicky thumbnail today uh, because people do need to be aware that the next 48 hours are going to be tricky, uh, going to be very tricky. Okay, so let's go to the weekly chart. The oscillators are not going to change. We're in the middle of the week, so the week isn't being turned over. We're just going to look at the price action. Uh, the price action is giving us a small consolidation candle that was preceded by a green star candle telling us that we are in a bullish trade according to the MRI. Uh, we also should be in a bullish trade uh, according to Lucid SARS, uh, but according to Consensio, we should be very, very cautious. By Consensio, I mean moving averages. Let's keep an eye on our allocation chart. We started a brand new candle. We are now 40% long in our allocation. And here's the best part. When the next candle begins, it technically calls for 100% bullish allocation. Because next candle, we will be in a situation where our price is above all moving averages. They are all rising. And they are all in proper sequence of the uh, shortest above the intermediate, above the long term. That literally calls for a 100% allocation. Am I going to create a 100% allocation? Not yet, because we are just a little overextended and we've gone a little too far, a little too fast. We The Bitcoin has not gone up by this percentage, even by this absolute amount in quite a long time. We have to go about a year backwards, okay? So I'm going to play it safe, and I'm going to wait for a little pullback, but I would love to be 100% long Bitcoin the next time this rolls around. So after we get a little pullback, after the short-term moving average maybe comes back to reality, uh, and then when it goes back over, uh, we can start discussing a 100% bullish allocation, and we'll see where that takes us. Uh, before I go to the daily chart, uh, Unconfiscatable is coming to Las Vegas December 7 and 8. It's an incredible event that it is short to sell out. We are selling tickets unreasonably early, uh, so make sure you get yours. We're going to add more speaker cards very, very soon. I'm probably going to spend uh, the next couple of weeks reaching out to speakers and securing some good speakers for the event. Uh, don't forget the financial summit will also sell out in Dubai the way the last time sold out in Dubai. We're not literally in Dubai. We are in Russell Kaima which is near Dubai, but you still fly into the Dubai airport. So Dubai is your destination, uh, but then it's uh, about an hour drive away from the airport into a gorgeous desert where the event will take place. All right. And of course, if you're interested in trading, which is a very risky profession, you have a free learn trading session section of my website and in products and services, you have the MRI indicator and of course the on-demand videos for education. All right, let's go to the daily chart. 
Harno Millman, how are you, brother? Thoughts on Bit Farms? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, 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 we'll get to it. We'll get to Bit Farms. So, why am I concerned? I am concerned because this is the second consecutive MRI top. I thoroughly explained how you trade an MRI top last time. And based on how things happened, the, the two days following the MRI top, um, I was saying you can enter back into your bullish trade the moment you break this green line at $17,000. $500, which broke the, the, the high of the candle that followed the MRI top candle. Now the situation is a little bit different. We have rallied a lot. We are at the top of a horizontal uh, uh, channel, which we were following for a long time. I'm still not sure why the arrows have disappeared. Um, what are we missing here? Where's my arrow? It should have an arrow. I don't know. Uh, trading view is still messed up. So, in any case, yesterday was a reversal candle. That is called a doji candle. You can learn more about that on the free tutorial on my website. And a re this reversal candle happens to create a brand new swing high for Bitcoin. And it's creating the perfect environment for a one to four candle correction, which is a one to four daily correction. So that is what I am anticipating. I would not go long on current candle. I would not go long on the following candle, but if the candle after that, if the candle on, well, what's today? Uh, so today, so tomorrow, Wednesday is the 18th. This is tomorrow's candle. So I would not go long on tomorrow's candle. I would not go long on the 19th. And I would potentially go long on the 20th, which is Friday. Now we had a uh, fairly good weekend. Normally, I wouldn't go in on a Friday going into the weekend. I would rather, you know, do it during the week. So I'm going to, I would not go long Bitcoin now. I would wait for a pullback. And this creates the perfect environment for that pullback. So how far do I think the pullback is going to go? I think the pullback has a high probability of going down to 19, 19 and a half, uh, down to the, nearest moving average, which is the 200 period moving average. I am anticipating this pullback. The market doesn't have to do what tone vase uh, tells the market to do. Uh, that's not how markets work. Um, I wish they did, but unfortunately they don't. I am anticipating a pullback. Uh, and that's my view on the market. I would not go long. Would I go short? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I would be careful. Always be careful going short Bitcoin. Uh, picking tops is, uh, you know, dangerous. But if I was ever to try to swing for the fences by picking a top, it would be a top that looks like this. We are at a known resistance. We are coming off a doji candle and we just gone up in a reasonable amount. So if there ever was a time to try and swing for a home run on a short trade, this is pretty much it. So if I was to go short, where would I set my stop loss? This is incredibly simple. If on a short trade, I would set my stop loss at 21,000. What is going on? I would set my stop loss right there, just above today's candle, the candle that just completed an hour ago. The high of that candle was $21,615 on average. And I would set my stop loss a little bit above that. So say $21,700. So that would be my stop loss on a short trade. But according to rules of doji candles, you should not be entering a short trade. 
unless the price is trading below today's candles low. So where was the low? The low was at 20,857. So unless Bitcoin is below 20,850, you should not be activating that short trade unless you really want to swing for that home run. Uh, but um, I would caution you against it. So stay patient, stay in cash. I would take my profit from the long trade and wait for the market to tell me what to do. Okay, short-term charts. We are looking at a four-hour chart. Our four-hour chart is still in a consolidation zone. Look at the CMF crash. This is incredible. Look at the price action. This is absolutely incredible. This, um, I, I'm, I'm even more confident in my pullback now. Look, the MACD called for a top right here. I wish I can draw like over. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me draw over this. Uh, let me see if I can do it. Let me do annotate, straight line. And now I'm gonna try and literally draw a straight line here. Boom, look at that. Just look at that. Oh, no, wait, this line is off. Let me delete that. Yeah. Look at that. At this line, at this line, I don't want to move anything. And this is where the MACD on a four-hour chart, and I don't know how seriously you are to take the MRI chart. Um, no, I can't draw a vertical line because I won't be able to draw the line into the indicators, uh, Bernoulli. I can only draw it on, an in, on a single indicator or on the price action. I can't use trading view to draw a line across, um, um, across the whole screen. So at that line, your MACD told you there is a problem. And uh, uh, and um, you can see that the RSI has been declining. Look at the CMF. The CMF fell off a cliff. But And what, what, what happened to the price action? Well, the price action is rising. Price is rising. It needs to be green. Price is rising, but oscillators are falling. Boom, needs to be in red. RSI and MACD. Now, again, I don't know how seriously anyone, I'm going to delete these. I don't know how seriously you should take the four-hour chart, but this four-hour chart is making me very concerned on the daily chart, considering the daily has just entered an MRI cell. So you have to be very, very careful right now. Very careful. I can extend this range a bit. You know, tone base rules. You can touch the uh, the wicks all you like, you just can't touch the bodies of candles. So I am looking for a pullback here or continued consolidation for a little while. Let's get rid of that line. Here we are with um, GBTC. Uh, GBTC fell today during the day. Uh, therefore, the premium fell a little bit, uh, but it's still rising. Uh, so that's great. Back to uh, $11 on GBTC. Talked about that a lot recently. Um, 
my MRI settings is pretty much in the MRI educational video. Uh, so just go back to that video and check it out. I'm not going to talk about it here on the stream. Oil, as you guys know, I am bullish on oil. Uh, we can check on the junkie and how they're doing in siphoning gas from the U.S. Strategic Oil Reserve, which is meant for emergencies, but as you, but uh, political reasons are always emergencies. Uh, we're going to wait for the next number. Uh, the next number, the next release is coming on the 19th. It's coming on Friday, and it's going to tell us uh, release date 11, sorry, the 1-11-23. Uh, that's the release date. Okay. So we're going to get the release date on the 19th for like the 13th or something. So we'll see how much gas has been siphoned off from the strategic oil reserve. Uh, we can see that uh, everyone is expecting the Fed to only raise interest rates by 25 basis points. Uh, so that is completely priced into the market. So nothing really to be concerned about. Gold, uh, as I've stated, I would not enter gold right now. I would wait for the break of the highs. Uh, basically, I would wait for this week's high to be broken before I enter gold. Um, I have the chart of silver up. I just don't find silver very interesting. I think gold is always a better trade than silver. So I'm going to close this chart. People have been asking me to permanently add the chart of LNG. I don't know if I have a natural gas chart. We can create one. Uh, load layout. They always move this thing. Uh, gas. I have a gas. Gas BTC. That's got to be some shit coin. I want this gas. Natural gas futures. But what the hell is this garbage? It's got to be some shit coin named gas. I don't know why I have it saved. I must have done analysis on this thing back in 2017. Anyone know what gas is? I'll wait for the live chat. Well, the big insurance companies should be crashing in price, aren't they? I'm guessing because everyone is dying of a heart attack, right? So the insurance companies are totally effed because they're afraid to raise insurance prices based on the fact that everyone is suddenly dying due to climate change, of course. It would never be the vaccines. It has to be climate change. So everyone is dying. Everyone's dropping like flies, whether it's football fields, whether it's former American Idol stars, you know, it doesn't matter. So everyone's dropping like flies and uh, insurance companies are scared to raise rates because it would be politically incorrect and prove to everyone what's really happening. Oh, it's Neo. It's the Chinese scam. Well, I was always bearish, of course. Let me delete this thing. Oh, wow. This has some old stuff on it. Delete, delete, delete. Look at these scams. Look at these shit coins. Look at the first day that it ever traded on Polonius. Is this thing still trading? It is. Let's go straight to the weekly chart. No, let's go to the daily chart. I want to see what my analysis was when this uh, when this scam first entered um our consciousness unfortunately jesus okay i want to see what my analysis was look at this trash wow and look what i predicted look what i predicted i predicted a rise into this area and then i would have predicted a crash into this area and boom there is the reversal hammer candle and eventually we got the you know the pullback to this area and then bam we fall another 80 percent or so look at this look at this 
What a piece of trash. Bulls 80%. Rallies in 2021. Of course, it doesn't reach its new old, its new high versus Bitcoin. And then how much did it lose? Not enough, clearly, because it still exists. But now we're going to go to the weekly chart. I'm going to drop all annotations. Um, how do I clear all? Uh, remove six drawings. Why six? All right. Maybe there was only six. Okay. Let's go to the month. Oh, you know, let me put the MRI on it. Well, why am I still looking at this? And um, we can put moving averages on this, but I don't really care. So it opens here, and this beauty is only down 99.89. Let me be exact. Let's not cheat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be exact. I'm not going to. I don't want anyone accusing me of cheating on the comments. I'm going to be super exact. See, I cheated right there. I cheated. Let me let me fix that. Okay, there it is. So this incredible investing opportunity has only lost you 99.88%. You really think it's going to rally to new all-time highs? Don't forget to put your kids' college, future college fund into it if you do. Done. Closing this. They're all like that. They're all like that. Ethereum is going to look like that as well. They're all the same. There is no difference. They're all the same. So let's look at natural gas. Also a very old chart. I'm going to drop these moving averages. I can add the other ones. Um, I'm not sure why the MACD is not showing, but it's a one-hour chart. Let's go straight to the daily. Bam, bam. I got to drop the background here. I don't like those grid lines. Uh, natural gas is dropping. Huh. I did not expect that. So natural gas is, well, this is NG. We should also look at LNG. LNG is different. LNG is liquefied natural gas. So this is uh, peculiar. Natural gas futures are not doing very well. Interesting. Uh, I would have thought it would be higher, but let's see what the MRI says. Uh, which is my triple moving average? Or it's moving average forecast. Maybe it's moving average forecast. Moving average forecast right there. It's mine. It's my own code. I'll eventually make these public. I just haven't gotten around to it. Oh, MRI top, MRI buy. Look at that. Daily scale, MRI buy. Whoa, what's with all this? Yeah, I'm going to have to fix some of this stuff. That's a lot of, uh, yeah, old charts. Uh, MRI buy called the low. I would be bullish natural gas right now. Potential bullish trade. MRI buy uh, creates the low. You have uh, 
what, what do you call it? Um, what's the name of this candle? Shoot. Um, oh my God. There's bullish engulfing is the op, bullish bearish engulfing. And then there is the, what the hell is the name of this candle? I am having, I am spaced out today. The Harami, that's the Harami candle. Jesus Christ, it just slipped my mind. Harami, thank you, it's hard. Harami candle right there. Jeez. Have to go to my own cheat sheet. By the way, these are public. You can just, you know, spread them around. The Harami candle. And uh, yeah, this creates a potential bullish opportunity for a little bit of a rise. What about the weekly chart? Oh, weekly is bearish, guys. Weekly is bearish, be careful. Weekly has got some room to go on the MRI. Got a couple of more weeks left, so be careful there. What about the monthly? Ah, uh, monthly is ugly. Monthly is ugly. Okay, enough of that. Gold I already discussed, S&P 500. We have the first candle above our declining trend line. Is it possible for me to fudge this trend line any more to create an illusion that we are not breaking it yet? I don't think so. I think this candle is breaking it. If this candle breaks the prior swing high in the S&P, I will expect a new all-time high later this year. Uh, which would be unfortunate because it kind of sets up the Democrats to win again. Um, I explained my view on the bottom beating for Bitcoin in my last video. Can you please go back to that, Enigma? I don't want to talk about it right now. Maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow morning. If I do a video in the morning, I'm not sure yet. I think that's it for me. The only thing we have left is probably Bitfarms. Oh, Solana. So Solana is is a garbage just like neo uh possibly worse uh the reason why solana is worse than neo is because like a lot of people saw neo for the scam that it is immediately and most people still believe that solana can succeed uh, so it's going to sucker in more people and it's going to cause more long-term damage uh so everyone is crazy over this and in the meantime solana has lost only 77 percent from its all-time high now this is against bitcoin not against the dollar keep that in mind so it's gotta make that up against bitcoin not the dollar versus the dollar solana's probably down more 92 percent yeah good luck with that Let's go to bit farms. Let's look at a real. Let's look at something real. I would love to see bit farms pull back so I can enter it again. Well, there goes my dream. <laughs> Clearly not happening. So I think Bitcoin is going to pull back starting tonight. And hopefully, if we're lucky, uh, Bit Farms is going to pull back to uh, 60, 70 cents. Uh, and then uh, I'm happy to re enter my trade. Uh, but for now, I have exited the majority of my trade. I still have some, a little bit, tiny bit, but I'm going to wait for a pullback. Because I think Bitcoin is going to pull back. I would love to see it close the gap. But I don't believe that it will. And I actually don't believe the stock will close this gap. Uh, this to me looks like a breakaway gap. And breakaway gaps don't really close. So I would love to see it close the gap, but it probably won't. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching.
Yeah, I have seen the HBO documentary on Acapulco. I make three uh, appearances in episode two. Uh, I didn't get any credit for it. Uh, would be nice to get credit on IMBD, but, but I didn't get it. Um, one of them is just a picture of me debating Roger Veer, and the other two are me on stage. And in one of them, um, I even have a, I even uh, say a line that they capture in the, in the movie, in the documentary. I thought the documentary was pretty good. I know I knew most of the people there. Uh, very sad for Nathan Friedman, who was uh, a very nice guy. Uh, good was a friend, uh, and he was great. Uh, I'm not a fan of Jeff Berwick. I think he's a total scammer, but I was a big fan of Nathan, and I knew the guy John that got killed. Uh, I wasn't friends with him, but he was an acquaintance. I knew him, um, and I I'm still good friends with uh, Juan Gold, who uh, was a big part of that movie. Had a bunch of interviews in that movie. Blessings from India. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, the um, let's see. Let's see how the U um, UNH United Healthcare. Let's see how they're doing. I would think they're doing terribly. Let me see if I'm right. Um, they're treading water right now i think the insurance companies are going to be in trouble i mean look they could always raise premiums uh pre premiums that people can't really afford so i'm not surprised the insurance companies are down uh because people are starting to realize uh, what's happening to their bodies I can't say much. I'm going to get banned. They're all going to look the same. Uh, CI is still doing okay. Um, you know, when that uh, football player collapsed on the field, uh, I, I think that was, I, I think that's the, on an on a on an important televised game, I I, I think that's going to be the ultimate trigger, right? So, what day did he collapse? Who can tell me so I don't have to Google? I actually forgot his name already. Uh, the the Buffalo Bills football player. I'm just going to Google it on a different monitor. Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills player. Uh, who collapsed? What day was that? On the third. What a surprise. Look, can you explain to me why? Uh, right there. So the, it was a Monday night football game, right? Uh, he collapsed on the third. Damar Hamlin. Okay. Uh, Damar Hamlin. He collapsed on the on, on Monday the Monday the second, right? There you go. There you go. January uh, updated January third. Yeah, the article was January third, so I'm assuming that was a Monday. I can just check the calendar, right? Um, yep. So he collapses on Monday night, and look what happened to healthcare stocks the next day, right? I mean, this is. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't paying attention, right? Like if you pay attention, you can profit a lot from the market. There's absolutely no reason for this health stock unless they literally cover him personally. There's no reason for this health stock to collapse that day, but collapse it did. And I think that's the day that changed a lot and it reversed on the MRI buy, of course. But um, But yeah, there it is. So we can go to the next stock, um, HUM.
you know, right there. There's your gap. There's your crash. Why did it crash? Why did it gap down? It was rising. Stock was rising. Why did it crash? You know, football player collapsed on the field and everybody knows why it happened. Anyone with two cells in their brain knows why it happened. So there you go. So another incident like that on national television, and uh, there's going to be another like that. Pfizer should be getting crushed, right? How do you spell Pfizer? P. F I Z O. Yep, there it is. I'm all right, bye, though. Tons of room to the downside. Not enough. Not enough. You know, not enough. Pfizer's all-time high was actually in December of 2021. Interesting. I was watching that game, too. We were playing poker, and we had the game on in the background. And uh, the moment it happened, all of us at the poker table knew exactly what happened. Uh, monthly and the insurance. Well, let's do United Healthcare. Um, yeah, it's got that hyperwave feel to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's time. I wonder if that's a hyperwave. I should text Socrates and ask him. Yeah, it might be time for insurance companies to go away. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all on the next one. I didn't see any questions. My moderators didn't send me anything either. What was that question? Tell them would you rather die of a heart attack or what? It disappeared. Weird. Heart attack or old age? Uh, how old? Like, um, uh, I'd like to live as long as possible, as long as my brain still works. You know, it's um, it's like it's like dementia or Alzheimer's is what concerns me really. Like, as long as I can still cognitively think, I can analyze a chart blindfolded. You know, someone could just tell me what the candles look like. So I'll always be able to make money. I'll, I, I'll have enough money to pay someone to move the wheelchair around. So, uh, As long as my brain's functioning at a proper level, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to stay alive. Yeah, uh, all, all timers is, is literally the one thing that, uh, that scares me in old age. I'm kind of, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to deal with the rest, right? Also, the technology is going to be better.
You can have like mechanical legs and arms. As long as your brain's functioning, you can move them. Tone makes money from trading, question mark. Not at the moment. But I will eventually. I'll go back to that. Um, Tone doesn't make any money. Tone makes some money from conferences. That's it. Oh, very little money. I don't really make any money. I don't even know why I keep doing this. Don't tempt me, guys. Don't, don't ask stupid questions. I may just quit and go back to trading where I actually used to make money. All right. Thank you all for watching, guys. And I will see you all on the next one. I am going to, uh, three seconds. Looks good. I'm bullish. Later, guys. No, that's MasterCard. That's not waste management. Well, MasterCard could be waste management, but uh, MasterCard and Visa are always bullish. They print money. They're always going to be bullish. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Will I ever do live trading? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I'm considering it. Not for the whole world. I don't want to deal with, with, with a thousand trolls. Um, I may do live trading for a small group and I will charge a lot of money for that. Maybe. Um, we'll see. Bye, guys. Don't forget on Confiscatable and Financial Summit. How many live viewers did we have? Hey, not bad.